Hello, my name is Kelly Bluen. I am a certified Zentangle teacher. I also love to doodle. So I am making these doodle videos where we do a little drawing based off of a prompt five days a week. However, I'm actually going to be done with this about a week and a half early for the month of April. So today is Friday the 19th, and um, it's going to be the last one for this month. And then the month of May, I am doing some florals and organics, and I just need to get prepared for that. I am also launching a website that will be ready in probably eight to 10 weeks. And so I've got a lot of work to do for that. So I thought, you know what, let's do this last day in April. And, um, and then I'll still do the Minutes of Zen on Fridays and the Mini Mandala Mondays. And then May 1st, we'll start a new series. Okay, so this is the April challenge from cutelittlepaper.com. And I highly recommend you continue on without me. So today we are doing bubbles. But you can continue on and do birds, swing, bow, ducks, cake. I already did cake. Spring balcony, wheelbarrow, sidewalk, chalk, carrots, or kite. Like some really cute prompts that maybe we can get to again another day. But I just, um, I just can't do it this next week. So, okay. So we're going to do bubbles for our last one of the month. And I've got my cute little journal here. And we'll just take a quick peek. This was um, the cake for my 50th birthday. And just some adorable florals and snails and chicks. Some really fun things. A couple of Zentangle patterns. Of course, a gnome. And even, I think, oh, there was another Zentangle pattern. And I love this one that we did yesterday which was the birdhouses. I think that's so cute. So um, yeah, I love that. All right, here we go. Go to the next page. And we are going to do a tangle pattern called bubbles, which is just perfect for drawing our bubble doodle. So bubbles is B-U-B-L-Z. And it was created by Lori Byerly. All right, here we go. So this one is, I think, so relaxing and so amazing. But if you don't love to make circles, um, it might be a little bit trickier for you. But I want you to not focus so much on making perfect circles. Like just enjoy the process and um, in the end, it's going to look amazing. So I'm going to start with pencil. And we can put a few circles down to get started. So this one, um, a lot of tangle patterns are non-representational. However, um, many have been created to look like something. So this is one of those that um, is called bubbles because it looks like bubbles. All right, so we're going to start. I like to start with a couple of really large ones and then add in some smaller ones. So as you can see, my first attempt at a circle is kind of wiggly, not super round. So I'm just gonna kind of play with it until I get something that looks somewhat circular. Then I'm gonna do another large one. I'm gonna do it right over the top of this one. So that's kind of an oval. So then I just sort of play with it. Until I get that rounded look that I want. Now, if I was making this on a smaller tile, which I have done in one of my 15 minutes of Zen um, videos, I made them really small on here and circles are easier to make. I think when they're small, this one looks like a puppy. Okay, so these larger ones are tricky, and if it helps you and you want to trace like a coin or something, you can go ahead and do that as well. All right, I'm going to put another large one up here. Then I'm going to start adding a few medium-sized ones.
Again, I go around mine several times until it kind of gets that circular look that I want. And I'm purposely overlapping these because I love that you can see through bubbles to the other side. All right, once you have a few like medium sized bubbles in there, then go ahead and add a few smaller ones. And my smaller ones are about the size of my fingernail. And again, I like to overlap these when I can. And you can just put these anywhere. So I thought about drawing the bubble wand, but it looked kind of cartoony to me when I made it. And so I decided not to put in the bubble wand and just focus on the bubbles. But that would be a fun thing to add to your picture if you feel like it needs something else. Look at how cute this is. Okay, I'm gonna stop right there so that I've got time to trace everything and then there's another step we're going to do and I wanna make sure we have time for that. So what I love about tracing the bubbles is we never have to like lift our pen because it goes behind something. Like we're just all gonna go right through each other. So now I'm just gonna trace my circle and it's going to be wiggly and it's going to be uneven. And that is okay. It's looking pretty good. So just continue until you have all of these traced. I'll give you a second to kind of catch up if you need to. All right, so Many of you have maybe heard of something called neurographic art, and there are people that become certified in teaching this neurographic art. And um, it looks really simple, but it does have a, um, a process to it and a method, and it can be helpful, it can be relaxing, it can be, um, I don't know, there's just so many beautiful things about neurographic art. So look it up if you haven't heard of it. But one of the things that they do is they make shapes or scribbles or circles or whatever you want. And then they take, take each of the intersections and they um, add like a little curve and soften that point. So that's what we're going to do with these. So I'm going to start up here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to start up here. So each of these intersections should have four parts, four little V shapes. So in each of those V's, I'm going to do a little curve and ink it in. So this way I'm going to do a little curve, ink it in. And I like to kind of come from the side and then curve it, whatever works for you, and then curve on this side. And I go to this one and I'm going to curve on that little V shape, curve on that one. And you can always go back, you know, and, and add 
a little bit of ink if you need that to blend a little bit better but look at how pretty that looks and this is truly meant to be a relaxing thing to do after you have all of your shapes made you don't have to think too hard you just go to each intersection and wherever you see that little v shape you add a curve And like I said, there should be four curves at each intersection. And they're all going to be a little bit different shape because some of them will be close together, some will be kind of wide, but it all works. So I'm going to show you how I kind of come down the side of this bubble and then scoop over to the other one come down the side and then I scoop and as long as this is relaxing for you there is no wrong way to do it if these little scoops are tricky let me grab a piece of paper if these little scoops are tricky then you could just add a circle at each intersection whatever you whatever you enjoy whatever helps you find calm so if you have not seen neurographic art look it up after this and it's pretty amazing So this is one of those projects where the more bubbles you made, the longer it's probably going to take you. I just love this. So I did this in a Zentangle class by my mentor. And um, she did it with, oh, I, I can actually grab it while you're, while you're working. Hold on. It's hanging up on my bulletin board. Okay. So we did this in one of her classes. And um, we did it with scribbles. And I started with a heart. And then we just scribbled around it and then we filled every space with a tangle pattern isn't that cool and then i had some very inexpensive um, iridescent paint from dollar general it's really beautiful paint and um, very inexpensive and i painted each section but you can see how we put in those little curves at each intersection isn't that fun? Maybe I'll make a video, a longer form video of that one of these days. Okay, so back to doing this. And if you have a kind of music that you enjoy, it's wonderful to just put on some music. You could do this while you're watching television if you wanted to. And you really don't even need to push down very hard on your pen. You can go nice and light. And if you don't enjoy making every single scoop individually, let me zoom in a little bit more, you can do all four of them. So I can come from here, I can go scoop that way, scoop that way, and that, and that. And then I just fill in that whole cute little section so scoop scoop you're basically making a diamond with the lines curving in
So now over here, I put these really close together. So it's not as clear where I need those little um, scoops, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to do what feels right. I have done all of mine and I say this often but this is one of those one of the things I okay I'm saying several things at once but I love to doodle I love to draw like the little park bench or the bird nest but um, you know in the end I'm upset with myself if it doesn't look like a park bench or doesn't look like you know a bird nest and there's there's pressure in doing drawing like that there's also an ending, you know, you draw the bench and you're done. And when doing Zentangle or Tangle patterns, but specifically the Zentangle method of drawing, like I'm working on these little bubbles and I could just keep going and going and going. So there really is no end. So it's just, if you have five minutes to do it, then do it. If you've got an hour to do it, then do it. And once I have this made, if I want to go in and I want to add any patterns, I can. I can add color if I want. I can shade it, of course. I could add an aura around it. There's no rules. So just keep enjoying it and do what makes you feel calm. And if this is one that stresses you out, then don't do it. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of shading. So I'm going to do the inside of each circle all the way around it. And there's already a little bit of pencil in there from when I sketched them. And I'm not going to erase my pencil lines, but you can if you don't really like having them. But I'm just going right over where they overlap and doing that inside wall. My stomach is growling. It's almost dinner time. All the way around. If you're not quite ready to do this part yet, then you can do it after the video. Okay, so now when I take my blending tool, I'm going to point it towards that edge of the bubble, but I'm going to be pulling it out into the center a little bit. This is going to give that bubble kind of a rounded look. It's going to look less flat because it has this, these little darker edges. And our goal is always the darkest point is against the line. And then it gets lighter as it goes towards the middle. So we don't want a definitely definite line. We want it to be a smooth transition to the lighter area. I'm going to stop for a moment. And I want to add just some little reflections. So look at those little tiny lines I'm putting in. And they can be short, they can be long, they can be dots, but this also adds to that rounding effect. 
And basically it's an aura, so I'm just following the outside shape. So pretty. And I like how when we cross over these and shade each bubble, the part that is crossed over is darker, which probably would happen, right, in a bubble. We have a little bit of a darker area where two overlap. All right, there we go. There's my bubbles. I'm so sad that this is the last one of April, but I promise this is not the end of our doodle series. We will be doing more. And again, May 1st, we're going to start doing some florals and organic ones. If you um, are on my Let's Tangle Facebook page, you can reach out for a May kit. I've got information on there. And um, anyway, it's going to be a fun month. So hopefully you can join me and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.